just finished my uh, warm up. It was very short, but as I said, I'm very low on energy and I just really want to get this workout out of the way. Um, of course, always warm up really well because it's good for your joints, it's good for your uh, muscles and everything. But yeah, I'm the type of person that really likes to skip on the warm up and the stretching at the end of the workout. So um, yeah, that's just my uh, flaw to go over the uh, workout really quickly. So AI originally wrote me barber lunges first and I'm gonna politely disagree with that one because I believe that uh, the first exercise that you do should be a very uh, stable one that you can load really well because then your muscles are still fresh and can take a lot more load and at the end of the workout when your muscles are already fatigued you can go over to the more unstable exercises because then uh, basically uh, your muscles will um, uh, give out uh, faster than your stability. So the problem is that if you program the unstable exercises in the beginning, then uh, your stability will suffer uh, more and um, uh, you will lose your balance faster than your muscles would uh, fatigue. So basically, in order to grow a muscle, you need to uh, bring it to almost failure to make it grow. So let's say uh, a barbell, barbell lunge, you want to target your quads and glutes and those are both really large muscle groups and um, uh, if you uh, do that first uh, your stability uh, or your focus one might give out faster than your uh, quads and glutes and if you program these exercises at the end that when your uh, glutes and the quads already got enough work done to them then uh, stability won't be an issue anymore. So for this reason, I'm going to start actually with uh, a hip thrust. And again, I have the same issue here than with the upper body workout that um, AI programmed me a lot of um, equipment uh, based uh, work. And since I don't have a leg press machine or a leg extension machine, I'm going to substitute those exercises to a good alternative. So um, instead of a leg press, I'm, I will be doing a hip thrust. It's not a one-on-one -on -one substitution because in a leg press you can um, uh, target the uh, quads a little bit uh, more efficiently uh, than in a hip thrust. But um, actually, I prefer the hip thrust over uh, leg press because uh, the hip thrust is really effective for growing glutes. And since uh, that's one of my uh, primarily target, uh, because I am very quad dominant, so my quads are always like popping and uh, my glutes are a little bit lazy. So that's very important for me to focus on, on glute work. So that's one thing that I'm gonna uh, change around. Of course, a leg press is fantastic. I love the leg press machine. Though basically I'm not a big fan of machine work. They're uh, very good for uh, people that do not have the best uh, sense of kinesthetic, so they don't really know how their body is moving in the space around them. And the machines uh, just put them in like a fixed uh, range of motion, and that way they can uh, learn the, the proper uh, movement. But they will, never, they will never learn the proper movement patterns, as in like the, the squat, the deadlift, um, uh, the lunges. So a lot of times people can leg press um, hundreds of kilos, but then I give them a bar and then they don't know what to do with it. So yeah, I really find it important for beginners to learn the basic movement patterns first. And then in order to uh, grow muscle, to uh, focus on hypertrophy, machine work is fantastic because you can load it a lot heavier than, um, than uh, free weights. And that being said, the second exercise would be a leg press, but in my case, I will substitute it to a uh, hip thrust. Um, then we have um, leg extensions for third, uh, which I also don't have. And leg extensions is primarily uh, quad. And I decided to do a front squat. I like to practice back squats and front squats um, back to back, as in like, one day I will focus on back squats, other day front squats, for the reason being that um, front squats are a lot more quad focused and uh, it's still important to focus on strengthening uh, the quads since it's good for uh, knee, health, knee health 
Um, and yeah, since I don't have a leg extension machine, then I will be using uh, front squats instead. It's again, not really a one-on-one -on -one substitution, but close enough. Then we have a Romanian deadlifts, which is still very, very, these are all really stable exercises. So stability um, is not a question here. My quads will get more tired um, and my glutes will get more tired than uh, anything else. Yeah, the front, front squats are a little bit questionable because then you have to hold the weight up uh, in front of you and then your shoulders might get fatigued or your core might get fatigued. Uh, that sometimes happens to me, but um, uh, yeah, it's just what I'm working with, uh, the equipment. So yeah, Romanian deadlifts. Um, and then normally uh, the original program um, had seated calf raises, but as I said in my previous video, I almost never do calf raises because my calves are just naturally pretty decent and I do have a lot of walking, biking, and um, I just, I don't really see the need for training uh, calves. Uh, so yeah, instead of, I will do uh, glute kickbacks because I think that those are a good exercise for developing uh, the glute mid, uh, which is the side glutes. And um, basically it just gives you a little bit bigger bum. Uh, which is really uh, which is like kind of trendy these days so yeah uh, i will be doing those um all in all um the lower body uh training uh is pretty decent but um in my opinion it's a little bit uh, quad quad focused and uh, it neglects a little bit the, the the glutes especially since there are no uh explanations it's just the exercise is written out Unfortunately, um, you won't know that, okay, I have leg press, but do I do it quad focused or glute focused? It just had um, Romanian deadlift. So do I do them hamstring focused or uh, glute focused? So as an experienced lifter, you kind of know those things, or at least I hope people know these things uh, if they um, have a lot of experience, because I did say when I requested the information that I am an experienced lifter. So hopefully uh, for like a complete beginner, it's a little bit of different exercises selection uh, because these are really advanced uh, lifts. And if you've never lifted a weight in your life, uh, don't go and uh, start doing deadlifts uh, with a heavy weight because you're gonna hurt yourself. Uh, so yeah, um, I think as I, as I already said, this is like a good base, but you definitely need to tweak it to your own uh, preference, equipment availability, and um, just uh, basically um, whether you're more uh, hip, um, quad dominant or where are your weak points if you cannot do lunges for whatever reason. And um, yeah, so anyhow, I've rambled on for too long and now I'm just gonna start finally the workout itself. So I just warmed up with uh, one set of 10 of 40s, 40 kilos, and one set of 60 kilos. And now I'm gonna have three working sets of 10, and that's gonna be with 85 kilos. Normally I did, last week I did uh, two sets of 12 with uh, 85, and uh, since the program says three sets, I will attempt three sets of 10 with 85 kilos. It's a little bit heavy. I already felt the uh, 60 kilo as well. My problem with hip thrust, they're fantastic for the glutes, but they just give the worst pain in the hips. And no matter where I put the fucking pad, it's just always painful. And I have a little bit of bruising all the time in my, around my hips. I don't know what kind of pad you have to use to not have that uh, pain. So if Anybody has any um, suggestions for pillows or like 
barber pads, then uh, please let me know because I am struggling to find one that's good, thick enough and, um, and just basically uh, pain free. Um, but I guess that's the no pain, no gain part of it. If I do anything less than like, I don't know, 70, 80 kilos, I basically don't uh, feel any, anything or I just get tired, but I don't really think that my glutes are working till failure. So yeah, um, that's it. Let's get to the first working set. So basically, I've stuck to my diet for two days. My weight is not really changed, but really feel that definition is definitely better. So yeah, that's how much it matters, whether you eat junk or you eat like proper foods, low high in protein, watch out for your sodium, your uh, carb intake. You don't eat like snacky carbs like chips or cookies or something. Actually, yesterday I did have cookies, but uh, yeah, just the amount. So yeah, just be sensible. Don't inhale like a bar of chocolate. Kind of stick to your meal plan. That's like, I think that's like the best that you can do. It's a little bit monotonous. So if you have problems with that or that leads to like binge eating, then of course don't do that. But uh, normally for like just regular folks, try to stick to your meal plan and you'll be fine. Yeah. So, I have to say that these uh, front squats are a lot more challenging than I thought up front. So, the original, the original program writes 3 times 12 and uh, for uh, leg extensions that's pretty standard, but uh, front, front uh, squats, uh, I think I will have to go really lightweight because uh, already with the 20s my heart rate is like really up and I am uh, grasping for air. So. Yeah, that's a, it's probably not a perfect substitution. I'm starting to, um, to do uh, goblet squats instead, but I know that those are not, I cannot load them as heavy. So the maximum I can go with goblet squats are like 16. And those are like, yeah, this, I can go at least like 40 on the, uh, on the front squat. Just to see how my heart can uh, keep up. couple of squats and go with three times twelve. Okay, so already the first roadblock we hit. Cannot go with, uh, with the front squats. Too hard on my shoulder, too hard on my, uh, my heart rate. It's just not a good substitution, so yeah. So let's go with heel elevated uh, goblet squats instead. Go. Well, that's 
definitely feel the burn. Anyhow, uh, so these are definitely better. My problem is I cannot load them heavier. Uh, the maximum weight I have is the, uh, the 16 kilo kettlebell. working in such high rep ranges and I just feel that just my workout is shit because after like eight reps I'm like grasping for air I cannot go as heavy as I want because I have to like oh I still have like four more reps to go so normally with like heavy compound lifts like Romanian deadlifts I don't know I go with like five to eight and then if I hit eight increase the weight and go a little bit less so 12 reps and my arms I am using straps and still my arms are fried like my forearms and I have that a lot with my clients as well that their grip is obviously a lot weaker than their strength and with like Romanian deadlifts for example or any rowing movement they need uh, to use straps and um, and I love straps I think they're fantastic but after some time, it's still not enough. Like, I feel that my, my grip is, uh, is uh, giving out. And that's not what you want when you're strength training. You want your muscle to, to give it out. So in that way, I think machine-based work is a little bit more beneficial for hypertrophy because you can just go heavier without having other parts of your body give out faster, like forearms, grip, I, I want to like focus on like the compound loops because I still think that they're more beneficial. Like I don't have to train a day of abs because my abs are just like pretty strong just because I do heavy compound lifts. So, so yeah, uh, anyhow, I have two sets left of this uh, fantastic uh, three times 12 Romanian deadlifts and uh, I'm just going to take like a minute more of rest and then just keep pushing. I think today is the kind of workout when you just want to get it done. It's like, I don't have any motivation. I'm just going through the motion. I'm not excited the slightest about it. Uh, yeah, starting to question my life choices at this point, but it's all right. I will manage.
right, so the lunges went pretty okay. So it's three times 10. So did one set of 40 kilo. And it was, I'm not gonna say easy, but maybe like a seven out of 10. So I will try it at 45 kilos. I think that's what I started to do before. So in my previous programming, I programmed uh, barbell lunges because I quite like them. They're the reverse lunges because they're just, I have no, not enough space to walk around it like a big barbell. So I, and also I think this is more stable like this. In my previous programming, I did have uh, barbell lunges but uh, then I uh, stopped with them because I couldn't really improve uh, after 45 kilos, just felt too unstable. So uh, because I'm still not working out regularly in a gym, I didn't want to do uh, like a Smith machine uh, lunges, which would be my first uh, guess or suggestion to uh, substitute for just a free weight uh, because a Smith machine, you can load up pretty uh, heavy, but it's more stable because you're like, in a fixed position. Uh, so I started to do um, walking lunges because those are like a weak area for me. I'm really struggling with my grip with those. So I wanted to improve on those, but then I, when I hit the plateau with that, then I started to do Bulgarians, Bulgarian split squats. And I quite enjoy those. No, I'm that's a lie. I hate Bulgarian split squats and they're hurting me, but they're very effective. So I'm still doing them. So I actually really like the barbell lunge, but uh, yeah, after some time, it's just, it just gets too uh, too unstable and uh, and you cannot load it anymore. So yeah, now I'm gonna try with the 45 kilos and then see where we end up. I still have two more sets to go. lunges I'm gonna drink, drink a uh, like a BCA BCA is a kind of bullshit but it's just some liquid and like some aminos maybe that's uh, good and uh, it will push the hunger down a bit and I'm also gonna have a few mentos because I I really feel that I need the sugar like normally yeah like just eating plain sugar like this is stupid it's like not good for your uh, insulin but with sports sugar is actually very much needed because it's fast acting carb it's gonna immediately get to your muscles and then you can push through, hopefully. Okay, so uh, one set of glute kickbacks are done. 
And honestly, I'm just gonna do two sets today because I'm fried. Like, I'm on the verge of not able, and that's just because of my muscles. It's just mentally I'm not there. My uh, start to feel a little bit my back, which is which is logical because I did a lot of heavy lifting today. So even though this is supposed to be hypertrophy, I still wanted to go as hard as I can so that I. I'm giving enough stimulus to my muscles. So, um, so yeah, I want to uh, just push myself and yeah, I feel a little bit my back, which is not ideal and I don't want to completely wreck myself. So I would just only do two sets and uh, call it a day. And yeah, uh, this is a really heavy training day. So I thought that this was going to be easier than the strength day, but honestly, it's been like more than an hour, I think like an hour and 10 minutes or so, and I'm still not done. So it's easy, like an hour and a half um, a workout. And compared to the strength upper body day, that was like 40 minutes. I'm exhausted. So yeah, let's finish this and then go eat because I am starving.